Okay, let's do the sense of smell, olfaction. So olfaction, as you know, relies on your nose. So your nose will let in chemicals called odorants. These odorants from the air will activate your olfactory neurons, your bipolar cells, which form your olfactory neurons. So these odorants will bind to it and trigger action potentials in your olfactory nerves. So let's see how that works, how it is that olfactory or how odorants from the air activate your first order olfactory neurons, okay? So let's begin with your cell. So it's typical, you know, let me try it another way. So your bipolar cells, so like this, you know, bipolar cells. Where here is the dendrite, here is the axon. So here is where the odorants bind to. They bind into these cells where they have receptors on them called olfactory receptors. And these odorants will trigger these receptors to generate local potentials here that will eventually create action potentials on the axon side that will then be relayed to the next neuron in the pathway. All right? So let's deal with this part first. How it is that odorants create, action, create local potentials in the neuron that eventually create action potentials in the neuron to blah, 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 continue in the pathway. So this is a typical, let's, let's make this a cell, your, your olfactory dendrite right here. Okay. So here on the dendrite, you will have receptors, olfactory receptors, ORs, that will bind to your odorant. So the odorant binds to it, that's step one. And then that the receptor will trigger the, the production of activation of a G protein again, G protein. Then that G protein will in turn activate an enzyme. An enzyme called adenylate cyclase. So G protein activates adenylate cyclase then that enzyme will convert ATP to cyclic AMP, called CAMP. So, odorant binds to receptor, receptor activates G protein, G protein activates an enzyme called adenylate cyclase, which is, which is attached to the membrane, and then that enzyme converts ATP to cyclic AMP. Then cyclic AMP will bind to a gate, bind to a chemically gated channel, and the binding of CAMP to the channel will open the channel to let in calcium and sodium. And when those things enter the cell, they create the local potential that will eventually create the action potential that will then trigger the message in that first order neuron. So that is the cellular mechanism of how an odorant binds to a receptor, activates a G protein, which in turn activates an, uh, an enzyme called adenylase cyclase, which converts ATP to cyclic AMP then cyclic AMP will bind to a ligand gated channel on the membrane to open it to let in calcium and sodium. And then the entry of these ions creates a local potential that will eventually add up to threshold to cause the neuron, this neuron, to fire an action potential. And then there you go, the pathway is, the pathway is started. Now, once the neuron is activated, so let's follow it. So you create the action potential in the bipolar neuron, first order neuron. Then that neuron, let me erase and come back again. Small board here. So 
So now this is your cribriform plate, cribriform plate with the old-fashioned foramina. Right here, the nose. So, okay. so your your nerves are here, coming through like that, and it snaps up here, snaps. So these neurons will snaps in a, a structure called your olfactory bulb. This is your olfactory bulb. And in there they have these clusters called glomerulus, these things, glomerulus clusters, where the neuron snaps. And once they snap there, they activate secondary neurons in the pathway. Okay, let's make these neurons, we call them your tufted or mitral cells. There are two types of cells that, that snaps here in, in the glomerulus and go, and go back, back in towards the brain. So either called tufted or mitral cells. And these cells will go back to snaps directly into your primary olfactory cortex, which is in the temporal lobe. So it's really a two neuron pathway in terms of olfaction goes, uh, in terms of how it goes, okay? So just do it another way. So you have, for the, for the pathway, you have your bipolar cells, the first order bipolar cells, snaps in the olfactory bulb. And then from there, they snaps onto neurons, which are either mitral cells or tufted cells. And then these neurons in turn snaps in the primary olfactory cortex. And that's where you perceive sound at this level. You also have some neurons that come back from you know, various cortical regions or even, even um, brainstem regions that come back down to snaps onto these cells. We call these your mitral dendrite, your think, granule cells. And these granule cells can have both you know, inhibitory or excitatory impact on these uh, synapses. In a way, they, they're used to modify your olfactory perception. You know, maybe when you're hungry, things smell better than when you're full. That can be due to how these granule cells modify the synapses at the level of the olfactory bulb before they ascend up to the cortex. Okay, that's olfaction. Also, one more thing on olfaction. Something called pheromones. Pheromones are odors released by both genders that tend to affect the reproductive activity of the other. So for example, you know, it's called the dormitory effect, where females that share the same dorm room have the same menstrual cycle. It tends to sync up, or even females in the same house. You also have cases where um, uh, females release things called copulins, that cause male testosterone levels to increase. You also have cases where males will trigger ovulation in females. So those are all effects that can cause by imperceptible odors, of course, that can somehow trigger the reproductive cycles or reproductive activity of each gender to, to, to be changed based on the presence or the levels of, of these various pheromones. Okay, now we can pause.